and watch out for pranks around better buddies. And welcome back to Better Buddies. I'm your host, RJ. With us this week, it's John. Hello. And James. Hello. There you go. Our Better Buddies icebreaker this week. What is the best slash worst practical joke that you've played on someone or that was played on you? Oh. This is a good question. Best slash worst. Um, one of the ones I'm proudest of. Uh, is I think I actually talked about this on the show once before, but when I was probably like seven, when I was a little kid, I loved jokes. I actually have one of my joke books on my bookshelf right now, the Jokeopedia, uh, <laughs> an encyclopedia of jokes. But because I loved jokes so much, and it, it had an entire chapter on practical jokes, or like a little sub chapter on practical jokes, and I learned a really great one. Where you have a cup of water, like a plastic cup of water, and you tell someone, oh, I can pin this cup of water to the wall. Like, you've got just like a tack or something. And they go, what? No, you can't. No, you can't. You say, yeah, yeah, I can. Here, hold this. And you hand them the tack. And when they take the tack, you dump the water on their head. Ah. Uh... It's diabolical. It, it's pretty it's imp- simple. Pretty, it's impish. Pretty impish. But the best what I did was same time period, same age. Um, I took a washable Crayola marker and drew on my dad sleeping father's face. Mm. Uh, gave him the scar, the mustache. Corrupted by Jigglypuff. Oh, total Jigglypuff move right out of the Pokemon anime. Uh, and I was too young to know that he had a show that morning so he gets up and looks in the mirror and goes oh shit um thankfully being washable marker it all came off in the shower but for a minute there my parents were less than pleased (laughs) but it was also that like the parents find it amusing but also aren't happy but also can't be too mad because how in the world would you the seven-year-old have known your father had work on a Saturday. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess that's fair. Like, it's not like it was a pattern thing of, like, he worked every Saturday. It, it was crapshoot because of his job, so I didn't know what given Saturday he was going to be at work. <laughs> <laughs> this is also pre-internet, so if it had been permanent marker, like, they would not have been able to just look up how to remove permanent marker. I feel like back. I feel like back in those days, it would have been like. I feel like removing permanent marker would have just been like an old, an old. Uh, you would just known it, right? I mean, like basically, right? Also, it's just rubbing alcohol. Is that really all it is? Yeah, basically. Rubbing alcohol and a slap uh, on the ass. I want to say. Permit markers and dry erase markers are both alcohol-based solutions. So if you get some alcohol, it sh- theoretically should lift it. Don't quote me. He's a witch. Get oh, him. Sure. He's a witch. They knew. Get him. Quick. He's a witch. In the, in the name of the Catholic Church and the one true faith, I'm shutting this podcast down for witchcraft. Oh, gosh. Oh, boy. Well, uh, <laughs> That's, if you come at the right. king, you best not miss. <laughs> so say it, the Lord. We'll see. Many witches have tried and failed. I guess, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, God didn't necessarily save uh, Joan of Arc when she was burned at the stake, but the devil didn't save those witches either, so. Damn. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I guess chance. Joan of Arc and the clearly sexist based witch hunts of England are kind of the same thing. How do you, one, it was new England Two, How do you uh, it know was that? Both. 
was it actually were there witch? Oh, England, they, yeah, there had Europe witch had witch hunts. hunts. New England, yeah, you're or in England, yeah, you're right, you're yeah, right, you're right. Like I said, yeah. don't miss. I mean, there's not necessarily a comparison, but it's just, uh, it's, I guess it's take your pick, I suppose. Also, who's to say, Archie, that they some of them weren't doing witchcraft? No comment. Who's to say? Uh, how do you? How the do you worst know? Practical joke that was ever played on me, I think, is probably. I can talk about this because the person doesn't work for me anymore. Uh, a couple of years, was a year ago year maybe two years ago uh one of my student employees uh used a friend's cell phone to repeatedly call and text my cell phone with john cena pictures and quotes and voice (laughs) clips um but because i work with students i was concerned about how who is this and how do they get into my number and where is it coming from Mm. because how did a if this is a student, and a student now has my cell phone number, I am potentially screwed. Yeah, like, you can't exactly block them. Well, it's not the uh, that you can't block them, it's the, okay, now it's out in the open, and who knows who's gonna get their hands on it. Yeah. But yeah, those, uh, those are my practical joke experiences. What do y'all got? I don't know if it's legendary, but in college, my friends and I, um... We got, like, this little troll toy from somewhere. I assume it was, like, a cereal box or something. Um, just, like, little cereal box toy size troll. Um, and we would hide it in each other's things. <laughs> um, which is great fun. So it was kind of like a scavenger hunt every time. And yeah. then when you find it, it's your job to hide it again. And it goes on and on and on. Um, so a couple great spots. Eventually somebody lost it. We have no idea where it is now. Um, <laughs> so someone <laughs> lost the game. Yeah, oh. but um, good buddy of mine hid it in our extra toilet paper, <laughs> um, and it took me like two months to find it. It took you two uh, months to go through your toilet paper? We had a lot. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> I, he was waiting. He was waiting. Um, Yeah, it was like a 24-pack or something. Okay. We had a lot. Um. And then something else that I don't know if I was really involved in, but my roommate sophomore year, uh, we hit a j- large, a very large jar of pickles in his um, clothes drawer. Oh, no. And he didn't find it for forever. Oh, Like, it didn't no. leak or anything. It was fine. He just didn't find it. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> this, will, this will keep forever. They don't have to. You don't even have to refrigerate those. Yeah. As long as it's not open, well, I'm pretty sure. That's the, that's the key thing there, isn't it, James? As long it's as it's open? not open. No, yeah, like, like it was totally fine to keep there. Oh, okay. Um, nothing happened. He just How do you not know you got pickles it. in your sock drawer? I don't know. Maybe that was his warm weather clothes. I guess. Uh, but... it, it was a t-shirt drawer. Oh, it was a t-shirt so. drawer? Even okay. still, t-shirt drawer, like, I go through my t-shirts. Like, I'd yeah, notice if there was a he, jar of pickles in my t-shirts. He always kind of dressed nice, though, so maybe he didn't wear as many t-shirts. That must be it. Yeah. And I feel like, too, it depends on the depth of the, the dresser or the drawer or whatever. I feel like uh, if you hit it, I mean, there are some drawers that people, like, don't use at all in their dressers unless, like, they really go into it. And if you hide it in the back, too, there's a good chance I, you might not find it. I much prefer mm. the idea that he, in fact, did know it was there <laughs> and had realized that if the universe has placed a jar of pickles in your shirt drawer... With you having no clue how it got there, it just appeared one day, it's probably a good idea for you to leave it alone. It might disappear. <laughs> leave it there. It might just go away on its own, exactly. Like, the universe yeah. has decided it needs to store this jar of pickles right here until it decides to take it away again. That's how cloud wa- storage works, actually. The wandering jar. <laughs> yeah. Just manifest things in random drawers all across the world, and then they just go away after a while. Could be. Beautiful. Who's to say God doesn't operate the whole universe on a cloud storage basis? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Why do you think there are clouds in the sky, James? Checkmate, atheists. Uh, you're right. You're right. <laughs> we just use modern computing to prove God's existence. <laughs> uh, what about you, James? I feel like you've got a practical joke or two in there that are appropriate for all audiences. 
Yeah, definitely. Because I'm also um, a little afraid you've got a practical joke or two in there that's not appropriate for anyone. I'm it's sure like, I've... since when are we appropriate for all audiences? <laughs> yeah. I'm sure I've got a few that I've sealed off because of trauma-based responses. There it uh, is. But I don't really know. Like, I don't play a whole lot of practical tape? jokes. The duct tape. Um. So one of the swim dinners... They duct taped your hands and wrists together, and you had to crawl up the stairs. That uh, I do remember less that. Less of a joke and more of <laughs> just hazing. It's hey, it was hazing. It was. But it was. It was. It was fraternal. It's just. It's I mean, just it's like not like he was like locked in a basement or anything. We were all down in the basement yeah. together, and he yeah. crawled up the stairs to try and get. Because correct me on anything wrong, but the we were like sophomores. Maybe juniors? Yeah, we were. And I also don't... I don't think it was everybody on the team. I think it was like... That was a I good don't think it Was it? Was it yeah. a dinner? I thought we were just hanging out at one of their houses. I'm pretty sure it was a decent chunk of team. Um, And a couple of the upper, upperclassmen... They duct taped you to somebody else, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, they like duct taped... James was and somebody it you? else. No, it wasn't me. Um, <laughs> Are you sure? Yes. I, I you flew sure you under haven't the radar. sealed it off? <laughs> I flew under that level of radar. Um, yeah, that's sure. But they, the one person got their duct tape undone, but James still had duct tape on. And so, James, you crawled up the stairs on your knees and elbows to get help from, like, the parents just, like, getting the tape off. Yeah, I remember and I'm this. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. The younger sister who was in our grade is at the top of the stairs and just, like, closed the door on you. <laughs> no, I remember because I, I hopped all the way up the stairs. I think it might have been on my mouth, too. And I nudged the door open with my head. And their mom, the mom of the home, who is the mom one of, the, of one of the guys on the team, uh, was, like, making dinner or something. And she, like... She did that thing where first, like, she clearly saw me out of the corner eye and, like, partially looked, and then she, you know, she did a double take. <laughs> and I was just like, <laughs> and she, like, screamed. And then the guy, <laughs> the guy, her son, who was a senior at the time, uh, just came up the stairs and was like, it's nothing, Mom! <laughs> like, threw me over his back and ran back down the stairs. Um, oh, that's what happened. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I remember this. I remember this vividly. Um, I don't really have it's like fine, a lot of mom. Prank don't stories. worry about it. Yeah, I got I got hazing stories. He'll get to go home eventually. Pranks like uh, I don't really know. I don't really play a whole lot of pranks on people because I'm not really good at setting that stuff up. And I don't feel like. I've had a whole lot of pranks like done to me, but maybe I'm just like, they're really blanking on me. Like the closest thing I can think of, and this isn't so much a prank as more of a, like just a goof that I pulled, uh, was like, um, when I was on this one kayaking trip with a youth group in like the summer after my eighth grade year, I, uh, um, what was it? Yeah, it, you. We would play this game where you would pretend to make like uh, a a blow dart with like your fist, and if you made eye contact with someone and like blew through it, like they had to be frozen, and somebody else had to come by and like unfreeze them. Basically. Oh, yeah. And it was just yeah, it was just something fun to do while like you waited. That or, dumb like, game that no one would bother to explain to me until like people were basically done with it yeah that it was like i first found it it's not on the it's it wasn't i want to say and be clear too because people who know me this was not on the like um this is not on the canoe trip that we all took uh our eighth grade year this is like a different uh, thing so maybe that? this is like oh you weren't okay no, okay okay, okay. On that either <laughs> um apologies then i i didn't know if i was like accidentally crossing uh some some lines some historical timelines um this is on like a kayak trip i took it might have actually been a, in the summer my seventh grade year regardless timeline not important um i would play this game with the people on this like uh on this youth trip and it started like kind of escalating where the the game started to be like 
where like where can you get someone to freeze or can you get someone to freeze you in like a funny position basically mm. and i uh my big fucking win was we had stopped on because this uh we're backpacking this this kayak Uh-oh. trip it, this kayak trip was like uh you're you're living out of your sack and stuff like that for like three or four days or whatever as you're going uh up this river and uh i was kind of an indoor cat for most of my life and i still sort of am but i was having a lot of fun out in the the great outdoors we stopped at this small island to have a picnic uh by the river it was really nice it was like a sunny afternoon and um you know afterwards we're playing some card games and we pack up we're getting ready to we got to paddle for another three or four hours and then we'll reach the spot where we're going to camp for the night and basically like me and a couple of the other people start playing the game and at one point we're like near the water and i get a really bright idea and i basically like uh i i can't remember i'm like pretending to be like i'm just like goading encouraging somebody to get me and they kind of roll their eyes and they do. And I just have the brilliant idea. I'm like, oh, this would be really funny. So like I pretend to freeze up. And then because I'm in the water, I pretend to like fall over just like stiff as a board. Oh, in, like face no. first, like right in the water. So again, not really a prank, more of just like a goof. You got but, like, yourself? Yeah, that was like, I was like, that was In the my, middle like, of the st- day on a kayak trip where you had limited clothing? Yeah, that was like my Three Stooges. Uh, oh my god! That was my god. Three Stooges, Charlie Chaplin, Buster Keaton moment right there. Um, so I was like, "Oh, it's pretty funny," and I I knew like what was going to happen, obviously, like when I did it. But uh, yeah, so that's again, I know that's not really a prank, more of a goof, but the, uh, that's like the closest that comes to mind for the me. The outdoorsman honestly. experiences of my life have collected together and are screaming at you on how bad of an idea that was. Yeah, not the greatest plan. Between absolutely getting soaked in your set of clothes for the day when you had limited options, but also you don't know what's in the river and how far you're going to hit your head on that ground. Yeah, we it was a it was a shallow embankment of like sand, uh, and you could see it was like maybe like a foot deep, not even like you could see straight to the bottom. But you are very right, like. If you are doing like, something like that, listener, if you're, do not, I, yeah. When you're kayaking I mean, and like getting instructed on kayaking, you're told very specifically, do not stab your uh, paddle into the sand because mm-hmm. you don't know what's under the sand. Mm-hmm. And if you're about to smack a rock. A rock or it could get lodged in mud and you could get really stuck and blah, blah, blah. Again, where I was doing it was shallow, but the point being like, yeah, I had to dry out in the sun it's not super fun. Shallow is more you likely know? you're going to hit the bottom. At least if it's like a couple feet deep, you got better odds that you're not going to whack your head. Yeah, that's true. I didn't like, uh, it's not like I jumped in. I just like fell forwards. Like it that's was enough. like stiff as a you, board. You, but yeah. you should know this. Water yeah, safety. Yeah, I know. I was like, it, no, it was, uh, it was full commitment to the bit, which I endorse at any time, but I also advise you to be aware of, uh, one might say, as Soren Kierkegaard said, one cannot one cannot commit to the bit unless you fully fully recognize all of the possibilities of failure that committing to the bit entails. So uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, sure, but that's uh, that's what committing to the bit is. I wouldn't say that's what it's all about, but that's always on the table. That's like if playing that stupid like get down, Mister President game. Somebody else get down, Mr. President, but you're all up in a goddamn plane about to go, like, skydiving, but yes. they haven't put the chute on, so you dive and push the guy out of the goddamn plane. Yes, that, well, that I would say, that's definitely a kind of commitment to the bit, but I wouldn't say that, like, commitment to the bit does not entail, like, if, uh, how would I say this? A bit I don't is know not a you... bit if people's lives are in danger. I well, unless there's, you say it's just a prank, bro. Yeah, it, unless yeah, you say it's just a prank. But you got I think camera. that's actually what they said. That's what they said right before uh, they dropped uh, the atomic bombs. That's what the soldiers. The, I think I like secret death destroyer. Yeah. Of, it's just a prank, bro. <laughs> it's just a prank, bro. Yeah, that's what we said. And uh, that actually, 
if you watch footage from the Iraq war, that's what they have to say every time they breach and clear a house. <laughs> they have to say it's just a prank, bro. Uh, it's, it's, we have a sniper up on the tower. It's just a prank, knowledge. bro. Yeah, it's just a prank, bro. Don't worry. Um, no, I would say, like, I guess this is actually an interesting little, like, I would say commitment to the bit, whether it's like a goof or a prank or anything like that. I would say, like, n- any bit, even good bits can involve possible harm to the other party, but no truly good bit is focused on harming somebody. Any, any truly good bit, harm is unintentional. And yeah. And the consequence well, based on out external factors you could not have comprehended. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Or it's like... I guess you if could say like it's like... If you're joking around about throwing a rock at someone, and then you throw the rock, you didn't commit to the bit, you just threw a rock at someone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, or like like a prank. I mean, I guess, again, it's like here, contextual. Here, I, got a, I got a good example for you. I got a good example for you. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. back when I was an RA, there was a time I was eating dinner with some of my coworkers. We're, you know, we're all student employees. I'm an RA, whatever. And I was basically done with dinner, right? And one of my coworkers started singing the Wonder Pets theme. And I looked over at her and I said, you can stop or I'm going to leave. <laughs> That's all I said. You can't yeah. be serious. That's exactly <laughs> what they said. And then I got up and left. <laughs> oh <laughs> because my God. nobody expects you to actually d- get up and leave. So I got up and left. But I knew they were all basically done. So yeah. right outside the dining hall, I stood by a tree in a shadow. Like, just out of like light. Like the hedgehog. Yeah. There's a big Shadow the Hedgehog statue, and I'm standing there. I'm out of the direct light, so it's not like I'm hiding, hiding. It's just because of where the light is, it's hard to notice me. And they all come out. They turn the corner, and I come out. Like, I literally, they nobody stops and looks at me, and I walk up behind the same person. I said, told you I'd leave, and they jumped so high. <laughs> And they were like, we thought you went back to the dorm. I was like, no, you're all coming out. (laughs) Yeah, see, that's a good bit. It's a a great bit. bit. It was a multi-tiered bit. It was a good bit. The bad of the bit would have been if they jumped and then fell down a nearby staircase because of it. Yeah, and you were intentionally, like, you intentionally set it up where they would fall down, like, a nearby staircase by, as a a product of you scaring them. Exactly. Like, is what I would say. Yeah. Like, I, I think that's a good example. I do. And I, I think like, uh, the, a really stereotypical example that comes to mind is like, uh, I think this rides the line. Okay. And this is like, this is like, um, this is like a marijuana bit. I don't mean it involves a drug. I mean, this is like a gateway to Uh-oh. other stuff. Potentially. James, didn't the dare program teach you anything? Not about pranks, bro. Just about drugs. <laughs> Gonna inject just one joke? Yeah. <laughs> Jokes. Comedy. Not even once. <laughs> uh, uh, no, I, I would say the... And I don't... Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe kids still do this bit. That sounds like a 90s Bart Simpson kind of uh, uh, funny. But... Um, Putting a thumbtack on your teacher's chair. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Yeah, that is like, to me, that rides the line. That rides the line because That's not it's a prank, not. Bro. I, I think it it technically is like it, that, but that's, that's a what prank I'm saying. back when from like kids who were scamp bullies would like actually injure the teacher as the prank. Yeah, yeah, it's like a real 1950s kind of, like, rub some dirt in it that's, sort of thing. That's prank. not a Mira it's... Jokwana, that's a wisecrack cocaine. <laughs> wow, did you just come up with that? I have spent the last 30 seconds workshopping that. That was really good, actually, RJ, I really like that. Black um, tar humor? Not even... Yeah, I, I love that, that was, that was excellent. That was It'd beautiful. Be better if I knew more than three drugs. <laughs> No, it would. It's a good, yeah, exactly. Listen to John. You're perfectly (laughs) fine just knowing three drugs. (laughs) The three drugs I know crack, cocaine, marijuana, and ibuprofen. That's my trinity. It's my (laughs) my holy, the holy family. 
Um, well, you caught the no, first I, one, right? What? Mara Joquana? Yeah, Mara okay, Joquana. Sure. Yeah, of course I caught it. Yeah. What was the what was the crack cocaine bit again? Wise That's, crack. Wise crack cocaine. Oh my god. I actually do genuinely love those. That's amazing. Um no, those are great. I I, I can't get I, I I keep going back to how good those are. <laughs> I'm trying to like blow smoke. I'm, did I'm you like get skipping hooked because of it. On my I did. drugs? I did get hooked You're on hooked your drugs. On Dare. Jokes. Uh, Dare didn't prepare me for this. Oh no. Officer McGruff would be so disappointed. He would well, Officer McGruff would be very disappointed with me for a number of reasons. That oh. would be one of the smaller ones. But um, Officer McGruff's disappointed in me because I faked throwing the tennis ball. <laughs> <laughs> like in, in my country, that's that's right the worst jail. defense. Straight yeah. to jail. Yep. In my in my country, that's the action equivalent of the N word. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you from? Dog country? Dog Dogistan? Dog Doglandia? No, no. What dog country dog? is the valley under uh, God's country. <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> what what would like a dog country be called? The island of Labrador. Oh hey. brilliant. Yeah. I love that. Newfoundland, yeah. Uh I do like the island of Labrador act. I'll take that one. I'll take I I do I do just like the I mean there is that popular Wes Anderson movie, The Owl Dogs. I do like the idea of just an island of dogs. I think that's awesome. Don't those dogs all have cancer? Um, I can't remember. It's more like I think they're in danger because they're thinking of getting rid of the island because it's made out of trash. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. The movie's pretty cool. Any hoozles. Any hoozles. <laughs> Our next segment is Better Buddies Recommend, where we recommend a piece of media to enjoy. Who would like to start? I can go. I will go. Okay, so I, over the weekend with my roommates, I rewatched a movie I had not seen in probably a decade, honestly. I rewatched School of Rock. Um, has anyone here seen the movie School of Rock? Before? I've seen most of it. It's been a long time if I have. I think I was in fifth grade. <laughs> I would recommend, regardless of uh, completion of prior rewatch or existence of prior rewatch entirely, I would Are you telling me recommend... I should watch a movie where a man lies about his identity, steals his roommate's identity to get a substitute teaching job, and then proceeds to lie a whole lot more to Take a bunch of kids to win a uh, band, uh, a, a rock contest. Yes, a battle of the bands. Yes, I am. Yes, what I am, sir. What's the moral it's... theme here, James? You should lie to people. What's the uh, the moral theme, RJ? Is that sometimes education isn't quite what it looks like, and that true power, true art, can come from the smallest and most unexpected of places. Doesn't Jack Black's all... character get a teacher drunk so he can get permission slips signed? <sighs> what? <laughs> so you have seen the movie. <laughs> so you have seen the I movie. I said I saw most of I, it. I literally, I, I, okay, say... I literally have seen it up to the point where they go to the competition. Oh my god, RJ, you, you, yeah, yeah you know, fault. I saw most of the fireworks show, then I walked out in the last We were watching minutes. it in class, I didn't own it, it wasn't my choice. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. I was um, also I goddamn, for... like, nine. Yeah, yeah, that's, no, I, completely fair, what I will say is, like, I will say, watching the movie, I was, it does ride the line, I think, in mostly intentionally maybe sometimes not always but mostly intentionally between like sleazy and just genuinely wholesome i think that's what's so interesting about it because for anyone who doesn't know uh or just basically ex- explained it honestly decently well but for anybody who doesn't know school of rock is basically about a down uh down and out like down on his luck 
uh, schlubby early thirties wanna be rock, rock and star. roll. Yeah, exactly. Wanna be rock star who's been kicked out of his band and is trying to find a way to pay his rent so he doesn't get kicked out and f- get into the battle of the bands to beat the band who's kicked him out. Um, and he act he accidentally one day receives a phone call that is meant for his roommate. Uh, who is a substitute teacher and the call is offering a job uh, for him to be a substitute teacher at a, an elementary school. He takes the job. He's this guy who drives like one of those big, it's like one of those big black Chevy vans. It's got like smoke pouring out of it. He's a huge, like Led Zeppelin guns and roses. This guy's a total rockhead. Like he's, he's Jack black. And basically when he winds up at the school, turns out, that uh, the school is a highly esteemed New England prep school, the best in the state. And they, you know, he's expected to teach this class of kind of tightly wound, like, I think they're like prim fifth graders, maybe. Yeah, exactly. Very prim and proper upper class kids. He discovers very quickly that, A, he doesn't know what he's doing because he has no curriculum. He has no idea how to teach. This is not a guy who knows how to do any of that. And, B, he discovers that the kids can play music, and some of them can play pretty well. So he decides to merge his two problems, and he basically gets the kids uh, and gets them excited. to. He pitches them on the idea of forming a rock band as a school project. And the kids all agree they don't want to do their schooling anyway. They don't like going to school. So they all form a uh, rock band unbeknownst to the rest of the faculty and his friends and all this other stuff. And uh, the movie just kind of follows the plot of Jack Black teaching these kids all about rock and roll. And people kind of, it's kind of a little like you get a little Everybody bit of self Everybody in the class gets their job. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you remember it. Yeah, you know it. So he steals food from the children. He steals food occasionally from the children, only to assert dominance. That's important in a room full of children. Um, gotta gotta make yourself heard. But the, the what I will say, this movie is actually um, this movie. I, I feel like I say this about a lot. Uh, this movie might be one of the best movies I've actually ever seen. I, no. Rewatching it, I actually I teared up like multiple times watching this film. Again, and the man literally takes a woman to get her drunk so she'll sign forms yeah but the whole point is like he's not doing it entirely because he's like he yeah he wants her to sign these permission forms so they can get out of school to go to the audition to get into the battle of the band so they've been which they've been working towards which but once he gets there doesn't he also lie to the guy and tell him the kids all have terminal diseases he does that at the, I'm not going to tell everything. Go watch the movie. <laughs> the movie's Go watch like the movie. 20 years old. Go watch the movie. But the, the, the point ultimately is, is that it's, there are some genuinely like very beautiful, simple scenes. This is actually from the same director who, uh, made the movie dazed and confused, which I'm pretty sure I recommended a few months ago. Um, Excellent, excellent, excellent film. And you can see uh, his name is Richard Linklater and you can see his imprint on it. Like it is this movie is a wonderful it's balance. A Richard of base. Linklater joint. It is. Is that is it actually him? I'm pretty sure. I don't it's know. Him. You're the one who told oh. me. Is he the guy who um, made Slacker? Uh, I actually don't know. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I, no I just brother. want to check this out. I, I've just been watching a lot more movies lately because of my movie club. Um, and that name is familiar. You're right. You're right. He is the guy who made Slacker. Nice. Very well done. Um, that's another one I want to see too, actually. I heard it was good. Um, yeah, I, I, I just about School of Rock, final things, I would say it's really, really cool. It It toes the line between this kind of like, I think the best part about it is that it's really two movies kind of like next to each other. It's like partially this sleazy kind of day in the life movie about this total loser who just loves rock and roll. Like this movie could have been like days and confused if it just followed Jack Black and it it chucked the kid 
an elementary school thing. And it could easily just be another Richard Linklater movie where he's like going around doing a bunch of like grungy rock and roll stuff and all that. But next to it with the kid movie, it like it toes the line between this like, yeah, this like sleazy day in the life movie and this kind of just very classic Hollywood like there's a classic formula in Hollywood movies where it's usually like, or even just stories in general where it's like older down on his luck male figure gets paired with a bunch of children for no reason. And he has to sort of like find a way to take care of them. Like that's, that's a common theme in a lot of stories. Um, there's a movie with Cary Grant called father goose uh, about world war two that follows a very similar uh, plot. Um, but just wonderful, wonderful, wonderful movie. It's simultaneously this like super kind of edgy, like rock and roll fantasy. And at the same time, this like really wholesome story about a guy who actually finds out that he does have a lot to teach kids. And I think it's really great. I think you should watch it. I will bet money that at least at one point or another, you might just cheer up. Oh, I'm sure it's great. It's just really easy to kind of tear apart in hindsight. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. And it's uh, it's probably better than my choice this week. Uh, oh, because, don't say that. Well, I'm recommending Patriot Games, <laughs> starring Harrison Dang. Ford. Oh, come on! That's like, isn't that supposed to be a classic? Yeah, it's a good, it's a really good movie. I really enjoyed it. I don't um, know if I've ever heard of this. So it's part of the Jack Ryan, Tom Clancy stories um uh 92 okay yeah 92 um harrison because there's the the like three kind of together like the one most people know is hunt for red october except except that was a um who was the actor james hunt for red october sean connery nope nope oh alec baldwin yeah which i watched all i watched patriot games clear and present danger and hunt for red october all on the same weekend and man alec baldwin really makes you understand how much harrison ford was bringing to the role <laughs> oh how so um in my opinion harrison ford brought a lot more of the gravitas <laughs> non-action hero-y bit to it to a degree um because they did a little bit more of like he's got the wife and the kid, and at the end of, like, spoiler alert for fucking 20, 30 year old movie, uh, Patriot Games, uh, his wife is pregnant, is one of the big plot points. And so it's very clear, like, Jack Ryan is a family man. He doesn't want to be a CIA analyst. He's out of the game. They end up bringing him back into the game because that's how spy movies work. You end up back in the game. Um,. But he does so with a lot of, like, it's it's a lot more believable. Like, this is a guy who, he's got a little bit of mileage on him. He's a little older. He really isn't going to be doing the whole action hero thing. And even in both movies, it's they're not action movies. It just happens to be spy thriller to a degree. Like, political thriller movies. Um, and, like... He, it's never, oh, I'm an action hero who's, like, taking out hundreds of bad guys. It's, I got in a fight and managed to subdue one guy because I kind of got lucky. Isn't that, that's kind of like, uh, it's kind of interesting you say that because I feel like that's kind of Harrison Ford's, like, action hero persona. I feel like Indiana um, Jones is clumsy and falls down yeah. a lot. Like, like, Han Solo's always running away. I mean, they, they get stuff it's, done, and I wouldn't say... You know what it is? I, I think hmm. it's a lot more realistic of a portrayal compared to, like, um, yeah. Alec Baldwin never yeah. ends up in a fight, but he also, like, uh, I can't look, having now seen Face Off, I can't look at Alec <laughs> Baldwin in Hunt for Red October and not see him in Face Off. Is he in Face Off? No, no, Off? it's John Travolta. Thought... It's John Travolta, sorry. Yeah, John Travolta. yeah. But if they look close enough alike where I was like, man, this guy's, uh, like... I don't know, he just... Alec Baldwin's Jack Ryan... No, John Ryan. Fuck, whichever guy. 
Alec Baldwin's mm-hmm. version of the character just didn't. It was a little too young, a little too slick for me. Did it come before or after Patriot Games? I'd have to look it up. Um, before Hunt for Red October was nineteen ninety. Dang. Well, I do. I do feel like what you said was accurate. Where I think Harrison Ford does portray it's more more realistic masculinity. Even though, like, I know that their movie characters are supposed to be fantasy, but it's very. Um, okay, these are all a series. Yeah. These are actually a trilogy. Um, are, they, are they supposed to be contiguous? I think so, to a degree. Um, the um. Because the Hunt for October and Patriot Games and um, Clear and Present Danger all feature, um, oh, what's his name? I know the actor, uh, Just Died, Darth Vader voice. James Earl Jones. James Earl really? Jones. James Earl Jones plays Greer, the head of CIA intelligence. In all three? Yeah. I totally forgot. I, I saw the Hunt for Red October when I was like a kid, like probably 13 or 14. I totally forgot about that. I probably freaked out when I saw it. I was like, oh, that's awesome. Um, I'll double check and verify, but... Um, where is he? He's on here. He's got to be on here. What? You mean... Did I miss him? Yeah, there he is. Yeah, Admiral Greer. James Earl Jones plays Admiral Greer in all three. Dang. Dang. But yeah, um, Patriot Games, I really liked it. Harrison Ford's great. Everybody else is great in it. I thought the, um, like the portrayal of his daughter and wife was really good. I liked how Sean Bean got to play somebody who doesn't die in the first five minutes of a production. Oh, but that's like his favorite thing to do. <laughs> No, no, no. And this one, his brother dies five minutes into production, so he gets to go on a revenge plot. Oh, yes. Um, It was also a little... It took me back to a degree of like, oh, this is something I've only read about because it's set during the Troubles in England and Ireland. Wait, really? Uh, Some of our Patriot Games is set during the Troubles. So, like... It's about the IRA and an offshoot of the IRA that goes rogue and how the English police and uh, intelligence agency are hunting for the IRA. I genuinely had no idea. Yeah, it took me a minute because they're doing the movie and they're like setting things up and I was like, wait a minute. The first scene they're setting up to set up the plot features guys with Irish accents in cars in England going after a political person. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. The Troubles. The Troubles, they're back. They're back, and they're better than ever. And this time, Harrison Ford. Hang on. Nobody liked the Troubles. Well, that's not entirely true. Well, they do this time because they're better than ever. They're oh, better than ever. Troubles to even more trub- troubler, trouble troubliest. What's th- more trouble? More troubling. <laughs> more troublesome. More troublesome. This what? time the Irish, they're back and they're angrier than ever. Shocker. That's not possible. <laughs> it's not the Irish f- potato famine. Yeah, what do they have to complain about? The Irish are sleeping off an 800-year hangover, and they're angrier than ever. (laughs) (laughs) Oofta. Oofta. But, so, would you say, like, Patriot Games would, like, so it sounds like Harrison Ford's performance is, is, you know, kind of a reason to watch it. The plot... The setting sounds kind of interesting. Does it actually take place in Ireland, or is it just like, um, is that just a plot point? It takes place a little bit in England, and then on the East Coast. Okay. 
Uh, and it's kind of this plot point of, like, it's very specific. They're like, oh, this offshoot group of the IRA is doing their thing because they don't believe the IRA is getting enough done. And so it's the thing where it's like, ah, oh, IRA is not taking credit for it. Or, but they, they take credit for the stuff they do. So who's doing it then? Oh, what a bit of mystery. But it's also the tension of like, ah, this guy is kind of the like public face of the IRA and he's on camera not taking credit for it when uh, Harrison Ford has reason to be very, very, very angry about these guys and is coming after them. And literally like one of the points is that Harrison Ford threatens the guy of like, if you don't give me what I want, I'm going to go on TV and tell everybody you did it, that the IRA did it. And it won't matter if it's true or not. It won't matter if they believe me or not. It's going to continue to ruin your reputation because no one will believe anything you say. Dang, Harrison Ford, why are you going to be so mean? <laughs> because he's awesome. Hey, uh, he's too... <laughs> but yeah, Patriot Games. Watch it. Patriot Games. I, I also, do want to check it out now, yeah. Uh, I want to give it credit because it's probably one of the few action movies I've seen where, again, the action hero takes down, like, a bad guy and in the process gets shot. This is the first fight of the movie. Takes down one bad guy, saves the life of the, like, queen's cousin and gets shot doing so. And immediately, basically, everybody is like, what the fuck are you doing? Why did you do this? You had no right to do that. You're, you are a visiting tourist who gave a speech at the British Naval Academy. Why Why did you get involved? Hey, someone's got to police the world. May as well be us. Uh, no, it's that his wife and daughter were, cut, like, walking over to meet him across an open field, and he was like, fuck this, I'm not risking bullets flying. That too. So it was a very noble reason he jumped in, but it's also kind of that, like... It was very realistic of everybody being like, why Why did you do this? You're, you're not an action hero. Don't do that. America hasn't been in the news enough lately. Yeah. Nobody's <laughs> yeah, talking Cold about War. it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? What is What does a guy do to, to, get, to, get, to get some attention around here? Hmm. There's already two wars going on. What about a third? <laughs> but where to start it? <laughs> All good things come in threes. All good things come in threes. Plenty of options. Taiwan, yeah. Australia, that's basically European Taiwan. Um, more like America. Afghanistan. <laughs> no, we already, we've been there, done that, baby. That's where the Russians go to get, or the Irish go to get training. So yeah, Patriot Games. What you got, John? Um, I feel a little compelled to do a movie, but I'm not going to. <gasps> Audible um, gasp! Speaking of Audible, that's a good segue. Oh. Um, I'm just going to go with the concept of audiobooks. For oh, okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> as an excuse for me to give Amazon even more money. Um, I've been buying audiobooks for books I already own, because then I can reread them while walking oh. around and doing chores and stuff. And it's nice. Have you heard of Libby? Um, I've been told. Okay. I've not. I don't have a library card. I need to get one. I'd say it's worth it. Like if you're gonna be doing audiobooks, might as well get Libby. Get that library card going. Get books for free. Yeah. I don't know if I would enjoy it if I haven't read the book before. Well, yeah, but you yeah. can get books you've read. Yeah. Although Save I did listen money. to. I listened to Altered Carbon before buying the book, Ooh. but I watched the show first. Oh, that's fair. I feel like it's kind of the same thing. Uh, so, we'll have to see. But yeah, I need, I need to get into Libby. But, yeah, I've been trying to walk a little more, and it's you no know, nice to yeah. what I would otherwise be laying down on a couch or a bed reading a book. I could instead be walking and listening to a book. I mean, that's that's where I listen to a lot of my podcast listening is while I'm out walking. Mm-hmm. What was the uh, what book you, you listening to right now? Yeah. Oh, I'm done now. Um, also, I've been doing a lot of driving lately too. So, 
What was the last one you listened to? Was it uh, Altered Uh, Um, Hero of Ages. Okay. Discord. Era 1, Book 3. Nice. Yeah, I, um... I, uh... Did not plan well. Um, so I have books 3 and 4 of the Stormlight Archive on audiobook, and I have books 1 and... Or books 2 and 3 of the original Mistborn trilogy on audiobook. So... Don't have a complete series of anything. Uh, nice. But, you know, that's how it goes. What would it take for you to download all of the Halo novels? Oh. Ooh. I have most of them in, like, ebook format. That's pretty close. I probably wouldn't get them all in audiobook format. <laughs> Neat. Well, I had most of them as of five years ago. I'm sure there's, like, 30 new books now. Yeah. They pump out like ten a year. <laughs> they gotta fill in I all got... those lore gaps they didn't bother to put in the game. Yeah, I got up till about where Halo Five starts in the background lore, and then I kind of fell off. Yeah, dude, I, I have to be honest. I'm I'm pretty Old Testament when it comes to uh, to Halo. I, I'm heretic. Uh, no, not at all. <laughs> I, I I find no salvation in any of the games past uh, Reach, is what I would say. I think Halo's 4 through Infinite can, um, in the most religious language possible, suck my balls, <laughs> is what I would say. <laughs> you take that back! No, no, Archie. 5 and the Infinite not. are fun to play. 4 is pretty solid. 4, four was a good first foot good. forward. But then they just threw it all away. The, the uh, gameplay I, has nothing to do with it. I'll put that out there. Yeah, yeah I, I I would agree. I, I think, like, I've played 4 and 5. I guess, to be fair, I have not played Infinite. I just feel like... Uh, I the the What made Halo, like, really cool was the mystery behind it. And, like, what was, was going on. Yeah, I think so. I think like, that's valid. Yeah, like walking around the rings and like kind of knowing what some of the stuff does, but not really. And you're like, it's part of the mystery. It's like that's part of the fun of the games is like slowly uncovering some of the stuff. At least for me, it was like uncovering that stuff. But knowing, like feeling that there was this grand mystery that you would get to know just a little bit of, but so much would be just out there forever. I thought that was so really cool. And then in Halo, like what they did with the rest of the games, like. They just I, don't know how to tell a story. To be fair, they answered a lot of that question in the novels. Yeah, but the novels aren't game. Like, the novels aren't, like, then, there's a completely different audience for those. I also think they kept trying say. to get back to that from having played the games. Like, they just kept trying and missing. They just like, kept, they just didn't pick a direction and stick to it. That is too. the main problem. Like, if they kept the didact as the main antagonist of the second arc, they probably could have told a lot more of a cohesive story. And then if they kept Cortana as the antagonist of the second arc, they might yeah. have told them a lot more cohesive story. And then if they had it brought in the villain from Halo Wars 2, that's where he was from, right? Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. What's his name? The Banished. Yeah, Atriox. Oh, that's right. Um, and he's kind of barely in the sixth game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, they just keep kind of changing out the big bad. Honestly, the Cortana and created stuff isn't that bad with the expanded I really liked around it. it. Yeah. I, I think... Oh, sorry, you go. I was going to say, I think one of the cool things I loved about that storyline and the Cortana and the created was, A, she's promising the AIs that they will be able to live forever that they'll be fixed but in turn for as much as you had ais joining her there were ais that weren't i loved mm -hmm. roland um roland was the, an ai on the unsc infinity and there's one point where he like yells at everybody because they're arguing and won't let him get a word in edgewise and he's just like sir with all due respect cortana like cortana You're has crazy. found a way cortana's <laughs> crazy but you're all <laughs> mad because she didn't die when she was supposed to? Yeah. But even then, after, like, all that, he still <laughs> sides with humans. Like, he's he even want, like, Cortana's offering, I will give you not dying 
in five years from Rampancy, and Roland is still like, well, I'm siding with the humans, so let's get the Infinity out of here. Yeah. Yeah, I just... Also, Captain Lasky. And then that doesn't last to the sixth game either. Yeah, yeah. I, I just feel like... I mean, the thing is, like, MP, I think some people might be like, oh, well, you need the Master Chief to tell a good Halo story. And it's like, no, you don't. They told a good one in ODST. And Reach. I And in Reach. Um, and they told a bunch in Halo Legends in that series and in the books, too. Like, you can tell good stories. I think the thing is, like, in... When you're like when you have books, you have a lot of space and time to really finely detail things. And a lot and, of times to say Master Chief fired his rifle. Yeah, yeah. Master no, no, Chief no, no, continued no. to fire his, his rifle. M50, RJ. His M50. His M50. They, they get very specific in the Chief books. Fired his M50. Chief fired his <laughs> but, M50. Chief fired his M50. <laughs> over and over like they'll describe the arc of a bullet it's actually pretty insane sometimes um yeah. but hey, the, i've the, read a the, halo book or two okay i try I'm trust two you. of them um but the point is like when you have a game it's like a blockbuster movie where you have to paint in like bold strokes it would be like if in jurassic park they went like way too into the genetics behind the dinosaurs we get just enough to know what's going on, but if you they go read the book, I know, but I'm <laughs> saying the movie RJ and the problem is I think they wrote the story of like the, 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 the seat, like I would call it the sequel trilogy to halo. They wrote it like they would write the books. Like they wrote it, like look at all this detailed stuff. Look at all this, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't. I don't feel like the story. The story didn't feel very like grand or sweeping. It kind of just felt like generic, sort of like sci-fi. But to James, me. they were given universe-level threats every time. How can that wow. not get any bigger? That's crazy. You know what? I, you know what would be awesome? Some themes, some ideas. Not wow. just they fucking, had an idea. Like, the idea was shoot the bad guy. <laughs> That's awesome. You know what? They had the exact same idea in Halo Combat Evolved, and it turned into one of the most successful franchises of all time. So you're saying this team so, had a good game? They were kind of the first to do it. <laughs> James, you said it. You said the idea of shoot the bad guy is enough to be a good game. I didn't say that. Well, I you said, said it was in I Halo Combat in Evolved, I and it, said, it was a fantastic, groundbreaking, great game. So, theoretically, them doing Shoot the Bad Guy as the theme for the sequel games should work, too. Yeah, exactly. So, why? So, either, so literally, why <laughs> I, either the audience is incompetent or, or someone making Maybe either Maybe you're the bad game at playing. Competent. You're right. Did you ever think I about forgot. that? Maybe you're bad at interpreting. You wrong. I, I could be I could be bad at it. It could it could be that. I'm when sure. When the great also, journey comes, James, the heresy will stay your feet. Oh, hey, RJ, <laughs> hang around. What, what, what <laughs> game is that quote from RJ? Uh, Halo Two, <laughs> bitch. Why don't, you, why don't you tell me what Halo game that quote two. is from? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I like. I'm sure that like Halo's four through infinite will be seen. That actually is a really funny phrase to say. Halo's four <laughs> through infinite, <laughs> <laughs> all six. Halos, yeah, yeah, will will be seen as like fun games, decent multiplayer, like all that stuff. I think it's just like uh, it's always hard to measure up to the original trilogy, and I do think they fucking bungled the story. Like I, yeah. not just as in like. I think you could tell a story about the didact and librarian and the precursors I mean, and all that stuff, but you gotta, you don't even need to like have... look at any of the games. You just have to look at the difference in story from halo fives marketing to halo five. Yeah. Cause I will yeah, never forget I... the whole like hunt the truth thing. And like, I, I... they had two trailers that were opposites, but it was that like either chief yeah. or Locke would be like walking up to shoot the other one at the base of a statue. Yeah, yeah, and it's just kind of like, I, I just don't, like, I don't think, uh, I think they, they tried too many things, too many gimmicks at the same time, and I do think actually both your 
your points are correct where uh like both what you said where it's sort of like they backtracked a lot it seems like on on that stuff i do apologize i know that people uh as one of the few people who's played the sequel games i find myself to be a foremost expert on them (laughs) they just cave to the community too much yeah they should have stuck to their vision i i agree dude i i think like this is gonna make me sound like a prick but I honestly think the worst thing you can do is hand like a property over to fans. Like I know well, that there are specific, well, I okay. think there is a difference between handing it over to fans to do their own things with versus yes. Cave yeah, yeah, to yeah. fan pressures. Yeah. Yeah. That's Case a better, point, that's a better Halo way four had an ongoing storyline option, but the fan response was, this is new and garbage and we don't like it. And they're like, all right, well, let's do something different then. Yeah, that's that's a good point. I think too, like Halo has always been really good at like giving stuff to its community, and I I just think like in an era where like fan communities tend to monopolize like you know the market of their particular interests, where they like you either it seems like no matter what you're going to get a bunch of like hate because people just like on the internet Good it's keeping. like their favorite thing to do. And I want to say, I do think gatekeeping is partially net. Like you have to gatekeep by definition. If you're going to find the right people to like do the there, job, no. like Gate, I there, think I so. think there is a difference between gatekeeping and vetting. How so gatekeeping is usually an intentional act done to keep people out of a community in the sense of like, a not, superiority thing. It's just, yeah, exactly. Oh, it's a superiority see, complex, basically, where it's like, you're not a real fan if you haven't played Halo 1. Yeah. Or, like, you're not a real fan if you like the prequel trilogy of Star Wars. Like, it's that kind of shit. Yeah. Or, like, you're a, you're a fake fan if you've only seen The Force Awakens. Like, no, the person fucking likes the subject... And that will get them into the rest of... It's their gateway into the whole franchise whereupon they can enjoy the other things that you like. Don't kick them out because they're like 10 years old and they first played like Halo 5. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I, I can see that distinction. I Versus think like, uh, yeah. what I think you're getting more at is the vetting to see like, okay, is the person who's taking over this actually like creatively inclined wants to do the thing or in a community sense like hey is this somebody who is contributing to the community or who's being super toxic and like problematic yeah and these things seem to be evaluated like, or both. Yeah, <laughs> on a on a case by case uh like basis uh for sure but i i, I completely agree like i think like um I've been doing a lot of uh, reading about uh, like uh, secret societies and like mystery cults recently, just because I fell down some rabbit holes. There, uh oh, indeed. And there's a uh, there's a, a fun little distinction of knowledge that is used uh, that is applied to secret societies, and I think you could really apply it to. Uh, it's even applied to world religions, and I think you could yeah. apply it to honestly basically anything. It's called uh, exoteric. And esoteric knowledge and oh yeah right like exoteric is like if you think of like the catholic church um exoteric knowledge is kind of like the mass it's like what the lay people receive as like the teachings and stuff like that esoteric is like what some of the stuff is that like the quote-unquote management knows and but then it's also like deeper parts of knowledge of like the faith or of an idea that are more like intuitive and require large amounts of knowledge, but like esoteric knowledge in itself, uh, the knowledge is like insider information. Yeah. It's like revealed like the, the best way I could describe it, honestly, like the simplest way I could describe it is like exoteric knowledge is kind of like looking at like a painting or a picture and it's like you know something you know that there's something hidden in this photo and you're like looking for it you're looking for it and esoteric knowledge is what happens when you finally stand in the right spot or get close enough or far away enough or you see it in a different light some change in perspective 
that reveals All right, we got the thing up. that's hidden. Okay, sorry. Th- that reveals the thing that's hidden in the in the picture. And all of a sudden, that makes the whole picture different. That's esoteric knowledge. And it's not just what you see and how it changes. It's the actual act of realization itself. So if somebody just told you, that's not the whole thing. Like, you couldn't be, like, considered in possession of esoteric knowledge because you didn't realize it on your own. So long story short, I think you can divide, like, fan communities or even like these big cultural stories that we have in that same way. Yeah. It's like there are, there are people who identify with all the outer parts, totally fine. And then there are like the few, if you know, you know, type things. And that's essential to the function. Of I, any type, before we wrap up, I want to highlight how John has just perfectly summarized today's episode of 257 Rex, James school of rock, RJ Patriot games, John, the concept of audiobooks. Parentheses, and then also a rant about Halo and exoteric versus esoteric knowledge. End parentheses. <laughs> yep. It's about the size of it. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you both for joining this week. Thanks thank for having you. Us. Yeah, pleasure as always. Thank you to the band Problem of Interest for letting us use the song Living in the Moment off the album Cross Off yesterday. You can find them on iTunes and Spotify. You can find us on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever fine podcasts are sold. We're also on social media. Our Facebook is Better Buddies. Our former Twitter account is at BetterBudcast. Use the hashtag BetterBuddies when you tweet about the show. Our Gmail is BetterBuddiesCast at gmail.com. You can send us fan art, hate art, fan mail, hate mail, declarations of love and or war, icebreakers you want us to answer, or questions you need advice on. We're also on YouTube, where we post clips of the show, so if you got any clips you want to see us post, let us know, we'll get them up there. And last but not least, be a better buddy. There he is! There he goes! Whoa, you said there he is before you connected for me. Uh, to be fair, he hadn't connected yet for me either. I just saw him pop up as online. Oh. Ooh. He's it's here. Your boy. Here comes the boy. Oh, I'm here. here comes Hi, everybody. The boy.